My name is Eddie Morris, consultant in obstetrics and gynaecology at the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital Foundation Trust. We've put together this video on what to expect on the day of your planned caesarean section and subsequent stay. We hope it will give you more information about our maternity unit and also help answer any questions you may have. A mother and her partner have very kindly allowed us to follow their journey on their special day. We're really grateful for their help and time and we hope you enjoy this video. Hello, my name is Babu and I'm a doctor in obstetrics and gynaecology at the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital. We will be both taking you through a journey of one woman who has kindly allowed us to follow her, her partner and of course their baby on their special day. So Anna, can you tell us a little bit about what women can expect when they arrive onto Blakeney Ward before their caesarean birth? Hello, my name's Anna and I'm one of the midwives at the hospital. Firstly, when you and your partner come through to the ward, you'll be shown to your bed space where you will stay until you go down to the theatre. This is usually the same place you will return to afterwards. You may choose not to have a birthing partner, but most women choose to bring their life partner, husband or wife, friend or family member. The midwife that will be looking after you will come and say hello and feel your tummy and explain what is going to happen. The midwifery care assistant will come and check your blood pressure and help you to put on your special gown and stockings. She will go through a theatre checklist with you and help you to put on your patient identity labelled wristband. She will give your birthing partner theatre clothes to wear. The obstetrician will also come and chat to you and ensure that the paperwork is in order, such as the consent form. Babu will discuss this in more detail later. The anaesthetic doctor will also answer any final questions you have. Are women given an exact time on when they will go to theatre? While we do have a theatre list planned, due to unexpected emergencies that may occur on the delivery suite, we are not able to give you an exact time, but we aim to keep women updated as best as we can. In very rare situations, planned caesarean sections can be cancelled and rearranged. Once again, we will keep you updated. When you see the doctor before your caesarean birth, he or she will go through the consent form and answer any specific questions you have. This is a form that has information on the risks and the benefits of a caesarean section. You will sign this with your doctor. If at any point you are unclear about anything or have any questions, then please ask. Okay Louise, so can you just tell me a little bit about why you're having a caesarean section today? Well we had a previous uh, emergency caesarean so um, I know when we came out of the procedure they said you can have a normal natural birth so I was reassured that if I did want to have a second child that it would be all okay and I could make the decision um, when that happened but we've sort of spoken about it from really the word go and um, as soon as we found out I was pregnant again, we started sort of the dialogue. Yeah, and talking about it, discussing it, pros and cons. And weighing up the risks. And although we felt that it was quite stressful last time, we felt that the benefit outweighed the risk. Um, you know, it was a totally different scenario because Eliza was coming out in an emergency procedure and we felt that having an elective cesarean next time would be much less stressful. Yeah. Um, even though we'd spoken about the recovery, we knew that the recovery would take longer, you know, I wouldn't be driving for a while. So, you know, we had quite a, a good long chat and we've spoken several times since then and like really picked it up and, and thought, you know, is this the right decision? And we definitely have felt that it's been the right decision from the work go. So the most common risks include infection, mm -hmm. and there can be infection in the actual urine, mm -hmm. infection around the wound site mm -hmm. and infection in the uterus. Well, so that's something that we need to look out for okay. post delivery. Yeah. We also need to be aware of blood clots in the legs and lungs, so you would be wearing those green stockings mm -hmm. as you've stockings. got. Yeah. And also be looking at giving you those blood thinning injections yeah. to prevent any clots in the legs or lungs. Yeah. Let's now walk to the delivery suite. Once it is your turn to go to theatre, a member of the theatre team will take you to the delivery suite. Here, you will meet the anaesthetic team once again. They will reconfirm your identity by checking your patient identity wristband and going ahead with the anaesthetic. Now, let's go inside the anaesthetic room. In general, we do two different types of anaesthetic. One is that we can put you to sleep and it's really rare 
um, because it got, um, it's not as safe as the regional anesthesia, which is the commonest one used uh, for the cesarean section. About 95% of our women have a regional anesthesia. The reason why we choose this um, procedure is because it's safer for the mother and also it's safer for the baby because none of the medicines that we put down the um, regional anesthesia goes through the placenta into the baby. Um, but also um, the maternal satisfaction is higher because you will be able to enjoy the birth of your baby and um, you can also do a skin to skin in theatre if your baby and yourself are um, a stable and everything is okay just to try to keep things as natural as possible when you come to the on the day of a surgery on the morning you will also meet the anesthetist who is doing your anesthetic and then you will see him in the anesthetic room and basically the anesthetist is going to be uh, all the time uh, with you in theatre until the section 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 is finished and take you to recovery just to make sure that everything is safe and basically we're there to try to uh, sort out any problems that can happen through the cesarean section. One of the commonest side effects of having a regional anesthesia is that you maybe feel sick. So it's quite important that if that happens you tell them your anesthetist who is there with you. In the anesthetic room the midwife will also insert a catheter. This is a small tube that is inserted into your bladder to help drain urine in a bag for the next 24 hours. Anna will explain this in more detail later. You are now fully prepared to go into theatre. Welcome to theatre. You will see a range of different healthcare professionals and everyone has their own role. You will see a midwife, the anaesthetic staff, the doctors performing your caesarean section and the rest of the theatre staff. You will now see a bird's eye view of the theatre. Here is the bed where you will be in. Your birthing partner can also sit at your side. This area is where the baby will be assessed once born. Your anaesthetist will sit behind you. They will always be with you. Your surgeons will be here. The rest of the theatre team are also here to help you. We want to make sure that your operation is done safely. Therefore, when you arrive into theatre, we will do another identity check with our paperwork. The team will introduce each other and the surgeons will clean your tummy with an antiseptic solution. We will then put a drape over your tummy. This drape also acts as a screen between you and the surgeons. Only when all the members of the team are happy, the caesarean section will begin. You should be in and out of theatre within one hour and 30 minutes. But of course, this time can vary due to the possible complexity of each birth. As the teen deliver your baby, you may feel pulling and tugging sensation, but you will not experience pain. Lots of the team members will be there to answer any questions or concerns that you have. We also have a radio in theatre, and so you may choose to have some quiet music in the background. Once your baby is born, the team can lift the screen down for you to see your baby before he or she is handed to the midwife. Your baby will be given to you for direct skin-to-skin -skin contact as soon as possible. Once the procedure is complete, we will transfer you from the theatre bed and onto the ward bed, as seen in this clip. Now, let's go to the recovery room. Once the caesarean section is done, we will transfer you directly to the recovery area. This room is directly next to the theatre that you will be in. Unless there is a specific reason, we always aim to keep mum, baby and partner together. The recovery nurse will look after you and do your observations. The midwife will also be present and will help you with breastfeeding and any other issues that you have. Generally speaking, you will be in the recovery room between one and two hours. This will be decided by the recovery nurse, midwife or doctor. So when mums first come to recovery following a section, uh, we like to support mums in feeding um, and this mum's breastfeeding, so has had lots of skin to skin um, with baby um, and baby's already had lots of good feeds. Um, so it's just supporting mum, make sure that mum is comfortable. Um, we also check to make sure that her uterus is well contracted and um, she's got a catheter in so we make sure that that's draining well as well. 
and we have a recovery nurse here um, who is looking after um, our ladies, checking their blood pressure and their temperatures um, and their pulse. Yeah, really happy, really over the moon. We've got a healthy baby, and um, yeah, we're really, really pleased that we've we've been through this morning and we've got a, a positive, well, a great, great result, really. I'm sure, words can describe it. Oh. I'm very pleased to have a boy and a girl. Yeah. And I've got a healthy baby and a healthy wife. Once you leave the recovery area, we'll go through our delivery suite and go to the postnatal ward. This is Blakeney Ward, the ward that you arrived in in the morning. Occasionally, sometimes women will go to the antenatal ward on Cly Obstetrics. We will keep you informed as best as we can. Anna, please can you tell women what to expect once they arrive back onto the postnatal ward? Yes, of course. When you come back to the ward, wheeled on the bed, you will have your baby skin to skin on your chest and will already have been helped to feed in recovery. Most women have a drip in their hand with fluids running through. This is called a cannula. You will also have a self-retaining catheter with a tube draining urine from your bladder into a collection bag. This comes out the next day once you are up and about. We do regular observations when you return to make sure you are keeping well. We also need to look after your pressure areas to prevent bed sores, so you need to turn at least every two hours. You should feel quite numb initially, so we will help to get you to turn over. We encourage you to eat and drink after you return to the ward. You will have a special dressing over your wound, which stays in place for up to five days. Sometimes you have another extra dressing on, called a pressure dressing, which comes off after six hours. You will have a sanitary towel between your legs to help absorb any blood from the vaginal area, which is a normal part of giving birth. It's important to continue skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby and feed regularly. We don't want you to fall asleep with the baby in the bed, so ask you to ring the bell if you feel sleepy and we can put baby back into the cot. We have a no co-sleeping policy in our unit. This means we do not want you to fall asleep with your baby in bed with you. Four to six hours after the birth, the midwifery care assistant will test the baby's oxygen levels by performing pulse oximetry. This is where a reading is obtained by attaching a small probe to the baby's wrist and ankle. This tells us that the baby's oxygen levels are as they should be. Approximately six hours after the operation, most women have a wash and sit out by the side of the bed. It is very important that you start to move about as soon as possible to avoid complications with blood clots in your legs and to reduce pain. This usually happens about six hours after your delivery. You will have regular pain medication prescribed which will be given at set intervals to keep you comfortable. These pain medications are safe for the baby during breastfeeding. Our partner is able to stay on the ward. Many women prefer their birthing partners to stay with them and to continue to offer support and can stay overnight. The ward has set visiting hours for the other friends and family who you wish to see in hospital. The midwives and the midwifery care assistants continue to provide help and support during the night. The following day after the caesarean birth, what type of health professionals will see the woman and her baby? There are many different healthcare professionals who come to see you. The doctors usually come early the next morning or later in the afternoon. The phlebotomist comes to take some blood. Staff from the neonatal team or a midwife neonatal examiner will come to check the baby. Your baby's hearing will be checked by the hearing screeners. The physiotherapist will come to talk about postnatal exercises. The bounty team, a non-NHS company who provide the bounty bags, will also offer to take a photograph of your baby at a charge, if you would like this. The midwives and maternity care assistants continue to offer you care and support during the day. So Anna, when can women expect to go home? All the team members need to be happy. Being ready for discharge does depend on successful moving about, passing urine after removal of the catheter, and not requiring extra care, such as IV antibiotics or low iron levels where you require a blood transfusion. Your midwife will prepare discharge paperwork on the computer and give you discharge information, leaflets and a talk before you can go home.
please bear in mind this can take up to a few hours after the decision has been made to discharge you. Your community midwife will visit you at home the next day. I hope this has given you an understanding about what your experience before and after your elective caesarean section will be like. Every woman is unique and will have their own experience and we will do our best to ensure that the process is as positive for you as possible. The obstetric doctor will see you the following day after your caesarean birth. They'll answer any specific questions you have, have a look at the wound dressing and make sure that you are safe to be discharged home. They will talk to you about reducing the risk of developing blood clots in the legs and lungs and quite often women will go home on a blood thinning injection called deltaparin. The duration of this injection can vary from either 10 days or 6 weeks. Your midwife or doctor will talk to you about this in more detail if appropriate. Once again, please ask if you have any questions. I think it's 5 weeks now. About so five weeks. yeah, yeah. Has that so, time went yeah. quite quickly? Or? Um, it, it has in some respects, yeah, yeah. it's um, been really good being at home and um, trying to sort of settle down into a little bit of a routine, but yeah. it still feels quite new, but we, yeah. We were very lucky, uh, we were out the next day, yeah. so, which was brilliant to get home and start, yeah. start sort of getting a, a family routine really. Yeah. So. And settling down, yeah. yeah. And how's it been with uh, little Eliza? Eliza, do you want to come in the picture? Come on here. No. Um, yeah, she's been really good actually. She's really accepted having a little brother, and um, yeah, she's been an angel really with it, with having him here at home. So yeah, it's worked really well. When we did have a, the um, appointment in the hospital before the pre-operative appointment, yeah. that was really good. Mm. That was very reassuring. And speaking to the anaesthetist then as well, I found that very reassuring because. Again, I wasn't sure if the epidural would be the same or if it would be different and how it would affect me. So that was good to talk through the whole procedure before and understand what was going to happen this time. So yeah. that was that was good. Good girl. <laughs> That's wonderful. Good waving. <laughs> we hope this video has given you an understanding of what to expect on your special day. At the North Norwich University Hospital, we are always here to help. We wish you all the very best with your ongoing pregnancy and birth.